Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Quick hitter edition. The murder case of Whitey Bulger is over with. Prosecutors in West Virginia have cut deals with the three killers. Uh, this whole saga looks like, at least from a uh, courtroom point of view, is over with. How this will, you know, possibly ripple effect with government accountability, I guess, remains to be seen if if uh, Freddie Gius, uh, Pauly DiColigaro, and uh, Sean McKinnon, who are the three killers, you know, uh, if, if somehow they, part of the deal, if, if part of this plea deal is to get them to, to tell about some type of government conspiracy, I don't know, it seems unlikely, but it's definitely suspicious how Whitey Bulger died. So everybody knows Whitey Bulger, the most infamous Irish mafia boss, probably of all time, uh, ruled Boston uh, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, was working with the FBI most of that time, um, went on the run for 16 years, was apprehended in 2011 in California, put on trial in 13, convicted, was in a witness protection unit in Florida, requested a transfer after he got a lot of his privileges taken away. It got into a altercation with a female employee of the, at the prison and basically said he wanted to get out of there uh, and was okay going into a general population unit in West Virginia. Had a lot of New Englanders who had issues with Bulger's cooperation he got there, I believe, on October 29th at about 8 or 9 o'clock uh, at night, and he wouldn't last 12 hours. Was murdered uh, after his intake in his cell by Gius and Di Coligaro, who are both very formidable, dangerous Massachusetts mobsters. McKinnon was a small-time felon for Vermont who... who just did the lookout. But Freddie Gius comes from Springfield, uh, was one of uh, the Springfield Mafia's top enforcers and killers for uh, Big Al Bruno and, and Anthony Arrivada. Di Caligoro worked with a North Shore, East Boston back crew uh, out of the uh, out of that part of Boston for his uncle, Big Pauly. Uh, he's in there for a murder. Freddie Gius is in there for a murder. They're not getting out regardless. Um, but it's just very suspicious. A lot of people think the government just wanted to keep Whitey quiet. And that's why a lot of protocol was dismissed in, in his transfer. And he was just kind of served up for the slaughter. It's already it's already known before this cooperation deal was cut that Gius and DiColigaro and McKinnon had gotten a heads up uh, that he was coming into the unit and Freddie Gias had a personal vendetta against Whitey because a mentor of Freddie's, a guy named Freddie uh, Weichel, had been wrongly imprisoned based on a Bulger's cooperation or secret cooperation at the time. So uh, there will be no trial. They will all plead guilty. Freddie is already, Freddie Gias has already been transferred to the Supermax in Colorado. Um, that's what we got. Whitey Bulger's killers have admitted killing Whitey Bulger. And believe me, nobody's shedding any tears for Whitey Bulger. That was a more than just a gangster. He was a depraved human being who, who frankly gets a free pass uh, when it comes to a lot of stuff in, in the pop culture realm. When you see the movies and the documentaries, they just talk about his ruthless um, gangster side. They don't talk about his predator side where he was sleeping, molesting young boys and girls his entire time um, as a crime boss. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod.